Good morning, Swift. A very warm welcome to our Easter Sunday service. I mean, who would imagine that almost the entire world will be celebrating this year's Easter Sunday at home? Just like what we did as a church last Friday for our Good Friday service, we celebrated a wonderful Good Friday service from the comfort of our own homes. In fact, it was so amazing to see so many of you joining in the service together with us. Um, a quick count, we had probably more than 100 people joining us together when we celebrated um, Good Friday. You know, so I really sense that although we are physically apart, but we are ever more united in spirit together as a body of Christ. You know, I believe that the spirit of unity is bringing us even more closer together to one another. And some of us might be feeling down or feeling trapped or, you know, feeling fearful, feeling lost over the last couple of weeks or months, you know, of, or feeling really fed up with this entire coronavirus situation, you know. My encouragement to all of, all of you is that we need not look further than the cross of Jesus. Because Jesus is risen today, amen? Jesus has defeated death. He has defeated the schemes of darkness. And He has defeated even the coronavirus. And so this morning, I encourage all of you to come together in unity, in one spirit, to declare that He is risen today, that the schemes of darkness is no more, that He has conquered death, that we, together as a body of Christ, we want to bring our sacrifices of praise into the house of the Lord to worship Him. Because we know, Lord, we know that we worship a God who gives us hope, and it's hope everlasting. So I encourage you this morning to step out into His everlasting light and to experience Him like He's never ever before. One announcement that we have this morning is I really want to encourage um, all of you to join in our Thursday night prayer meetings. Right, We do this every Thursday night via Zoom online and we have more and more prayer warriors joining us and it's so amazing that we are you know, seeing so many prayer requests that comes in and God answering so many prayers. Indeed, our God is a God who answers prayers, right? Let us prepare our hearts as we uh, worship Him by reading um, the Scripture for this morning. And this morning, the Scripture is taken from um, John uh, chapter 20. We'll be reading from verse 1 to verse 9. Let's read this together. And early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb, and both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but not, did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. And finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside and he saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, O God, to you, for today is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We rejoice because Christ is risen today. We rejoice today because Christ has defeated death, because Christ has given us hope, Christ has given us everlasting life, and this morning, O oh God, we come before you and declare 
with our hearts and with our voice that He is risen, that we are able to sing hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. He is risen indeed. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we celebrate Easter together, let us come together as a body of Christ to declare that Jesus has risen from the dead. To declare that He is the resurrected Messiah. He is our King of Kings.
Good morning, Swift. Welcome to the Easter Sunday morning worship service. Uh, just want to let you know, the Good Friday, two days ago, two nights ago, we do have a we did 
have a very good time to see all people come together to have a good get gathering and sharing. And thank you for all the testimony and praise team. Uh, I think we, we did a really good job together um, to, to come together to observe the Good Friday. And also, I think it's great because I do, hopefully this will be you once in a lifetime uh, experience that we're going to uh, we, we do use Zoom and, and using virtual connection to come together for Good Friday uh, gathering. Hopefully next year we'll, we'll, we'll not do that. We're going to come together in a, in a place and worship again. Uh, before we start, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for a wonderful grace. For many years ago, you sent your only beloved son to come to this world to die for us, to demonstrate how great you are, to demonstrate your love, your forgiveness, and how we can we can redeem from our sin. Lord, thank you so much. At this time of Easter, will you help us to remember the resurrection of Jesus? What does it mean to us? Let us remember that, Lord, we have eternal life. Let us remember that we will be resurrected one day like Jesus, what Jesus did. Lord, so help us to focus on you. Let's humble our heart and open our heart to listen to your word. We pray all this in Jesus' victorious name. Amen. So today, as well I show you, the topic is about what does Jesus' resurrection mean to you? And the scripture I'm going to use is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 58. And don't worry, we're not going to read through the whole chapter uh, during the message. But I really wish... Uh, for all of you, for the coming week, you're going to spend some time with through the whole chapter, 1 to 58. I will help you through the daily devotion materials to go through the whole chapter, to, to reconnect ourselves to God and to, to examine ourselves how much we really believe in Jesus' resurrection. Uh, about 10 days ago, I read a news uh, on the internet that uh, in Italy, you know, Italy, they now they have a major outbreak. Uh, people are getting so anxious. Uh, they have anxiety and worries. And and especially for those medical crews, they've been serving people. They've been under the threat of getting infected, high stress and high pressure. So that's a tragic story that one uh, male nurse, he murdered it. his uh, girlfriend, who's a who, uh, who was a doctor, uh, a doctor because he believed that the, his girlfriend did get him infected with the corona, coronavirus. So he got upset, he, he, he killed it, he murdered it, his girlfriend. And then he tried to uh, suicide, but then the police got him and, and uh, saved him. But the, the saddest thing is, after that, they examined the two two person, the, the the girlfriend and and the male nurse. They find out they're both negative. They're negative uh, on the infection of corona corona virus. So it's the imagination came from the the guy. He thought he got infected, and he got upset at his girlfriend because he thought he got infected by his girlfriend. His he he believed in that. And then he took action, respond to what he believed. And then it shows, it's pretty scary, when someone has the wrong belief in his heart and he put it into action. So today, if you take a look at uh, 1 Corinthians, what Paul tried to say to the church of uh, Corinth, that uh, it's about one important belief that Paul taught them beforehand, but now they start to have a doubt on that. So Paul said, but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? You have to understand, many people misunderstood. They, they thought the church uh, believed that Jesus had not resurrected. But no, what they what they're saying right now, according to Paul, is that they believe there's no resurrection of the dead. So they believe one person, a person, when the person passed away, that person will not be resurrected, and that's the uh, that's the theology or the belief that Paul tried to correct them. 
Uh, so let's take a look at how Paul tried to defend this uh, disbelief first. Uh, if you continue to read verse uh, 12, 13 to 15, you'll find out that Paul emphasized that he, he tried to do it in a logical way that he said, what happened if Christ haven't been resurrected? So he he did defend, first of all, I'm going to read it later in verse 1 to uh, 5. He, uh, he, he defended Christ. He did resurrect it. And then in here, he tried to say, what happened? What if? If there's no resurrection of the dead. And in here, he said, uh, in verse 13 to 15, I'm not going to read it, but it say basically, it say, if there's no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been resurrected, has, 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 has been raised. And then, if Christ never been resurrected, then our preaching is useless because, we, because we're not telling you true. And then our faith is useless because our faith, all our faith, nowadays Christians, as Gentile especially, we, our faith is based on Christ is the Savior, is the Son of God. He crucified that on the cross, and then he, resurrect, he resurrected in the, in the third day, and then he conquered death so that we can be resurrected based on his salvation. So, but now, if, so Paul, what Paul is trying to say is, if there's no resurrection, Christ is not resurrected, and then, our faith is useless because our Savior, he cannot save himself. And so, and then he draw a conclusion, first conclusion that we are false witness. So what, what he means, we are false witness, because Paul and all the apostles at that time in the first century, after Jesus was erected and uh, he uh, escalated, and then they start to, uh, they get together, remember, and then in the Pentecost, uh, the Holy Spirit came, and then they start to, uh, sending out the gospel, the good news, uh, to this world. So, they being a living witness to everyone, to the Gentiles, to all nations, that Jesus had resurrected. But now, the problems of the church, uh, of Corinth, is they believe that no death can be resurrected. So, it really bugs Paul. Paul have a concern on that. What are you, what are you all talking about? If you say Jesus is not resurrected, this is the problem. We are take, we are giving a false, fake witnesses. And then in later on in uh, in later verse, he also debate uh, further. He say, if death, if that are not raised in verse seventeen to twenty, then he say Christ has not been raised. The same argument. If death is not raised, I mean, it, he, he emphasized it again. Then our faith is futile. It's useless. It's, it doesn't mean anything. So in earlier, he said that our faith is useless, and then he draw the conclusion that our witness, uh, we're giving fake witnesses. But now from here, the second argument he he brought out our faith. Our faith is fut, uh, futile, and then we are still in our sin. And he further further the theology and the concept of it. If we, if we cannot be resurrected, so it means we are not saved by our sin. We are going to face death. We are, we are not, we are, he's not talking about the physical death of our body. What Paul is talking about is talking about the eternal death. So we, since we cannot be resurrected eternally, it means we will be still in our sin. And those have fallen asleep. As many of you know, Paul often described the, the brother and sister in Christ who passed away, and he, instead of calling them, saying that they, they died, Paul usually called them, they fell asleep. So they just sleep. So what's it mean? They will wake up someday. They're just taking a nap. They, they, they finish their work their jobs, their mission from God on this world. So they, they take a break. They took a nap, according to Paul's concept. And, and then someday they will, they will wake up. They will be resurrected. And, but if, if they believe, if the church, they believe that no one can 
will be resurrected. So it means they are all lost. We should be grieving deeper and even deeper for that because we are not going to see them forever. And then we are of all people most to be bitter. So pity. So what's that mean? It mean it means like Paul Troy said, if we are only have hope on this life, if we but but we believe that we will be resurrected and the and the real the real reality is not do you think that we are we we are living in a life is worse than the others? Because all the other non believers they believe life is life will end. So they spend their time to make the most money, to be successful, to enjoy their life with everything they can they can possess, they can consume, they can enjoy. But for us, because all this time our faith telling us that we believe we have a life, a much longer life than for uh, the after our current life. So that's why we need to we need we need to put our value into the eternal life. We don't do the same thing as what people what people do. So what Paul trying to say, if if we end up we cannot we will not be resurrected, then we are poor. We, 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 our life is poorer than all the non believer because they know how to enjoy their life and which we are not. So in here then this is a, the second argument that Paul tried to say. And the third is similar to uh, what well, he ended with the second. So in on the on the third argument in verse 32, he mentioned it again. If that are not raised, then let us eat and drink because for tomorrow we we'll die. As well, I explain it because tomorrow we will die. So then we should. So it's further, further, further than the second argument. So Paul said, okay, if we if we are not going to be resurrected, then we are worse. We are living in a life worse than all the all the non-believer. So in the third argument, what he tried to say, so then, why don't we all forsake what we believe and just follow what the Gentile, what the non-believer doing? Just enjoy life. Let, let, let us all go eat and drink to fulfill our desire, to fill our, to fulfill our physical needs. And then, because tomorrow, we all die. Someday we all die and then we are going to, to die forever. So this is the the three tiers of arguments that Paul brought in into um, his letter, and then uh, in between he put in uh, other discussion to um, to, to uh, go further into his arguments. So he, he did talk about like Jesus is the second Adam, and uh, the first Adam brought in sin, and then Jesus is the second Adam brought in the life and spirit. And all this thing, he tried to say, he, he accumulating, he deducting, and telling the church that, yo, we will be resurrected. Because if this is not true, then our current situation is pretty sad. But then, at the very beginning of the, uh, of this session, he mentioned it on um, first that he said Christ is really, he have Paul has a really firm uh, belief that Jesus had resurrected Jesus is the savior that we all look we, we all longing for and and because they say first of all Christ died for our sin which which is at that time I think most of the people they know that because most of the people even in, in that church, that they, they witnessed the death of Jesus. So uh, Jesus was dead on the cross, crucified on the cross, and the pers and the people in those centuries, they know that in those times. And then they all saw Christ was buried. He was buried, bur buried in, the, in the tomb. And then he was raised on the third day. And how he, how he defends on the third one. Christ was raised on the third day. So he's, he, he emphasized on what's happened on that time that after Christ is resurrected, he appeared to Severus. And then he appeared to the 12, the 12 disciples. 
And then he appeared to more than 500 people. And, and he, uh, Paul even said that for those 500 uh, people, brother and sister, many of them, they're still alive. Although some of them, they fell asleep. But many of them, they're still alive among the 500. So, and then Jesus appeared to James and all the, all the apostles. And most important, most important to Paul, that Christ appeared to him. So to, to Paul, why have the firm belief that Jesus had resurrected? Because it's not because not because Cephas, Cephas told him. It's not because of not because of the twelve disciples told him. It's not because the, the those five hundred brothers and sister what came to Paul and tell and told Paul that oh Jesus had been resurrected. It's, it's not James. It's not the other apostles. It's Jesus Himself appeared to Paul. So brothers and sisters. Today, it's very important for us to understand our belief that Jesus has been resurrected. It's not because pastors say so. It's not because Rick Warren says so. It's not because uh, your, your Bible, your Sunday school teacher says so. It's not just your friend says so. Because you had your personal experience. It's because Jesus had appeared in your life. He showed up in your life. You, through the Holy Spirit, He touched you, and you know that He is the Son of God. And He, that's the time He appeared to you. And that's the time you should remember, because they, you know Jesus has resurrected. And we will be resurrected someday, because Jesus promised us that someday we'll be resurrected. And He already prepared the place for us, as what we read Part of, uh, in John during the Good Friday, Jesus prepared the place for us. We will be there with him. We will be resurrected. This is our belief. And it's not a false belief. It's a true belief. Because we all experience that. Um, last year, I read the article. It's pretty interesting. Uh, I want to ask you, if you take a look at the screen, if you, can, you have a good eye, good sight, tell me, what do you think this phone is? Many of you may think this is Huawei, but actually, this is the, this is the uh, iPhone 11. This is uh, from an article showing from uh, a China te television, uh, like uh, the live show, live show that, uh, about competition of speed. Uh, doing public speech. And one of the candidates, uh, uh, and he he liked to post things on the website, and then he got he got fans. I mean, he got his subscriber. He got six, according to the news, he got over 6,000, uh, sorry, 600,000, 600,000 subscriber, subscribe to his blog, blog to his uh, um, or integral, I mean, whatever uh, way you see. Uh, so, one day he posts, he posts that he purchased a new iPhone 11 on September. You can see the date. Uh, I think it's September 20th, something like, something like that. Um, so, and then he posts it on the other, on, on saying that uh, in Chinese, they say, So, in Chinese, in English translation, basically say, Though I cannot reach in flesh, but my heart is longing for it. What well, he's longing for it? He's longing for. He say he he want to. He he's a fan of Huawei. So, but he got an iPhone 11. So he put a, a Huawei lock screen as his lock screen in his iPhone 11, so that he he he, he tell he's telling other his heart. Still longing for Huawei, and the reason he said he, he didn't get a Huawei phone, he had to do the iPhone because he uh, have so many things that uh, under the the Apple system, he, it's hard for him to transfer. It it bring me a, a really deep thinking after I read the articles. I think nowadays many Christian, many many brothers and sisters in the modern world, I think we're living in this way. We, we, our heart is longing for Jesus. Okay, my heart is longing for Jesus. 
but actually, I cannot reach in flesh. I'm holding a worldly body. A world, I'm holding a worldly, worldly values. I know. I know Jesus' teaching is good. I know Jesus promised resurrection. I know Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that's a God, but that's not affecting my life. My body is still an iPhone 11. No matter what, no matter what, what lock screen I try lock screen, I try to put it on the phone. This is sad, brother and sister. But if you look at Paul, Paul's mission is clear. He said, now, brother and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you take in your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have belief in vain. What Paul is trying to say, he said his mission is to share the gospel to, uh, to, uh, to the world and to teach what the Bible said, to teach from the scripture that Messiah had came. To tell them that belief in Christ, they will, have they will be resurrected, they will have eternal life, they will, their sin will be forgiven, and they will be saved as long as they take it as their sin. So Paul said, by this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have belief in vain. So his job, his mission is to teach them, to show them that they need to get a solid belief in Christ and, and reflect it in their life. So brother and sister, especially if you're a teacher, our job is to teach our student not only for the knowledge Maybe you're a Sunday school teacher, not only a teacher in, in public school, I mean, or, or private school in, in, in the teaching institute. I'm talking about like even your Sunday school teacher, your Bible study leader in small group. You're sharing, you're preaching, you're teaching others the gospel, the word of God. It's not for just, the, the reason we're teaching those is not just for us to, to, to know the Bible knowledge. It's for us to put it as our stand. A belief. Remember the, 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 the story, the tragic story I, I mentioned in earlier. I know it's a sad story for the nurse that murdered his girlfriend, but it shows what a true belief. What, what, I should say it this way, sorry. It shows when someone really believes in something, his action, his act will be different. So if we believe our faith is to ever truth from from the beginning of the time because it's from the almighty god if we ever believe jesus really resurrected and he's our savior and someday we will be resurrected too how are we acting our life in responding to that and also how are we teaching our student to put into their life and for the parents it's the same I know we, we, we concern about our study of our children. We concern the, the good beings of our student, our children. We try to give them the best we can so that they can, they can, they can run further than what we can, we can do. They can go faster than what we can achieve. But brother and sister, don't forget we need to build up their faith so their faith can have a stand that bring them to true faith, so their belief will not be in vain. Their, their life will be fulfilling God's mission. And the resurrection of Jesus does not only happen on one, on one Sunday of a year. I know many times, uh, during Easter, we do eight hunt. No, no offense. I think it's a great thing to teach uh, children about life and and, and, and and the importance of life and we're born of life. And and maybe we got bunnies. Many. Uh, I don't know how many of you know that in United States, in United States and Asia country, uh, they have 
problems of the human society. They say many parents devote money to their children during Easter, and after the season is over, they, they just dump them. We can talk about Easter eggs. We can talk about Easter bunnies. We can talk about Easter gifts. We can talk about Easter dinner. But don't forget to talk about the resurrection of Jesus. To make them understand is the truth and is the greatest love God gave to us. To, to lay a foundation in their life so that one day they know that the most important things in Easter is not the eggs, it's not the bunny, it's not the gift, it's not the meal, it's the Son of God. Jesus is living in our life and we will be resurrected like him someday. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so thank you so much for wonderful grace that um, you showed your love so many years ago, way before we, we were born. Jesus already died for us, crucified on the cross, buried it in the tomb, and then he resurrected in the third day. And he also showed himself to many, many believers and his disciples. And he commanded all his disciples, all his believers, to evangelize, to spread this gospel to the world, so that one, some nowadays we can receive the salvation, the greatest gift from you. Lord, in the time of Easter, let's remember Jesus had resurrected, and someday we will be resurrected, and we will be in your presence for eternity. Lord, let us share this good news to the others. Let's Teach the next generation to be strong in the faith. Let them act, act out a life that reflecting their resurrected life. And Lord, let us be used by you. Lord, we know that during the coronavirus, many people were hurt. Many people lost their loved one. Many people will face financial challenges. Many people may need to move out from China. Or may, many people, they, they, they don't know how to face tomorrow. But Lord, let us bring the light and the hope to our community, to this country, and to this world. We pray all this in Jesus' victorious name. Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope, who could imagine? So great a mercy What heart could fathom Such boundless grace The God of ages Stepped down from glory To wear my sin And bear my shame The cross has spoken I am forgiven the King of Kings calls me His own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who sets me free. Hallelujah. 
has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion. Declare the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to bring out of the silence the roaring lion. Declare the So at the end, this time before I um, do the benediction, I want to uh, share with you verse 57 to 58 of today's uh, scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, as the beginning of the benediction and word of encouragement. It says, But thanks to the Lord, we give us the victory. He gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brother and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your neighbor, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Let's bow our head and receive the benediction. May the love of our Father, the grace of His Son, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us from now and forever. Amen. Goodbye. I'll see you next week.